The 2023 Jayco Pinnacle 36 FBTS might be the perfect model for full timing. Why? Well, lots of reasons. It's a bath and a half. It's got a huge front bathroom with a design that's really incomparable to anything else out there. Three slides create lots of room on the inside. It's a wide body construction like all Pinnacles. It's a modern farmhouse design. Just a fantastic unit to take a look at, especially for full timers. What are some favorite things about the 2023 36 FBTS? Hmm. Well, let's start with the bathroom. The bathroom design. I have two sinks right here, plenty of elbow room in here, a huge shower, plus a cedar lined closet right here. I love this so much. My second favorite thing is right here as well. Jayco put the washer and dryer prep separate from the closet so it does not take up valuable closet space, but I still have a washer and dryer in this bathroom. And this one might be my favorite one of all, 30 feet of awning coverage. Hey guys, it's Mike Drudge coming to you from the VRV family of companies. Let's check out this 36 FBTS. This 2023 model, I'll point out some changes in 2023 as we go around. Check out the cavernous storage down here. I love this in this design because this is what's gonna get all the activity. You're gonna be accessing this door more than anything here on the patio side. It's so handy, it's under the awning, it's clean storage. We have our five gallon water bottle, which I'm gonna to get to in a little bit, but you might be asking yourself, what's up with that? We have our central vac bag right here handy, easy to change and motion sensor lights everywhere. So when your hands are full, and they usually are when you're loading or unloading things, you don't have to turn that on or off. So I've got my stuff, I'm ready to go inside. I don't have to worry about turning the light off. If you wanna put a TV out here, you can do that. You got cable hookups and power readily accessible. Now, uh, before I go any farther, check out the awning coverage on this side of the unit. We have 30 feet of fun side coverage. So I call this side the fun side of the RV. I've got 19 feet here and 11 feet there. So, uh, 10, 20, yep, that's 30. Sure enough, it is. So how about that? The fire pit, the picnic table, all the fun stuff's happening on this side of the unit with lots of coverage. We have our LED lights underneath the awning, the whole length of the coach. So I'm really in love with the amount of awning coverage on this side of the unit. Since you're gonna spend the vast majority of your time, I hope, on the fun side of the unit over here. Now, this unit is prepped for generator. So that means we've doubled the amount of propane capacity. So instead of two 30s, you have three 40s. So from 60, we go to 120 on propane capacity. So if you want to add a generator later, you can do that and you'll have, uh, and even if you don't, you have a lot more propane capacity. Speaking of generators, this is where it would go. And like I said, it is prepped. I can see that it's prepped for a generator. If you wanna add that later or have us add it, you can. If you don't, you just gain that much more storage up here. And then Jayco's uh, great about giving you plenty of space to upgrade your battery array. You're gonna get a couple batteries standard, but if you wanna put six batteries, maybe you wanna upgrade to lithium, plenty of room to do that. We've even got additional storage up on top here. I like the flexibility of being able to upgrade our power needs, whether it's batteries or generator. Ideally both, it just depends on how you're going to use it. We get a lot of questions about how much solar do I need and the, I can't answer that until I know what you're, how you plan on using the RV and then we can help you through that. Now this unit's got cameras on the side. It's got camera in the back. And this one's also, also optioned with a camera over the door. So all these cameras then become a security system as well. So when you're at your campsite, you can keep an eye on the, everything on the outside of the coach all the way around it because those uh, camera locations are now powered. I'll show that when we get on the inside. Here's your other two propane bottles, your other 240s. So again, 120 is great to have that much uh, capacity. Motion sensor lights everywhere, as long as they're on, just turn that one on. There's your five gallon water jug. You can replace that uh, at any big box store or even have it delivered to your campsite. Uh, but that five gallon jug supplies fresh water to the spigot 
in the island on the inside and it also supplies water to the water and ice in the door of your refrigerator. So you're cooking and drinking that water, not sometimes crummy RV park water. The other good thing that it does is keep you from having to fill up your refrigerator with bottles of water. You got good, clean, fresh water down here and you can save that refrigerator space for more important things like beer and more things like that, right? Or your favorite soft drink. Now over here is our, what I basically call our wet bay. Here's where we're gonna make all the attachments and set these levers depending on how you're using the coach. This takes all the mystery out of it, so just follow this little guide, whether you're hooking up to city water, you're dry camping, which is code for camping out where there are, there are no hookups. And of course, winterizing, self-explanatory and sanitizing too. So just uh, put these knobs, these color-coded knobs, the way the directory says, and you'll be in good shape. Hot and cold on your outdoor shower here. It's got a quick connect. Up here is our auto level, so we can control the level from out here, levelers from out here. I can do it from inside the coach, and I can also do it from my phone, which is real handy. Have a whole house water filter here. Uh, unscrew this, put a water filter in there, and you can pick it. A lot of people ask, where do I get these water filters? You can really get them at pretty much any big box store. Walmart carries them. Anyway, you'll want to do that at least seasonally, if not more often than that. You're filtering all the water that comes in and then your refrigerator has a filter on it as well. So it's filtering that. But remember, that's pulling water from that jug as long as you keep it plumb the way it comes from the factory. We have an 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter in there. So that's inverting power to your refrigerator. So if you stop, turn the truck off, you still have inverted power to keep your refrigerator happy. Plus that's sending inverted power to uh, several outlet locations inside the coach. So if you want to take a nap at a rest area en route to your destination, you can run a CPAP machine or something like that next to your bed with regular 110 power. This is our furnace vent right here. Our black tank flush valve is right here. This is great. So I don't do this every time with my coach, but if I'm going to store it for a while or at the end of a trip before we go home, uh, I will hook this up and rinse the black tank. So what do you do? You want to make sure your black tank or tank valves are open. Put a hose up here that's a separate hose that you use only for this purpose. Turn it on and let it run. So just let it run. Go pull the awnings in, have a drink, fold up the lawn chairs and what have you, and just let that run. What that's doing is it's spraying out the inside of your black tank. It'll keep the readings more accurate. It'll keep it cleaner, of course. It's just good uh, tank hygiene, if you will, to do that after a trip. You can certainly do it after every time you dump the tank. It's not going to hurt anything. Now, this does have the SaniCon Turbo Waste uh, Management System. That uh, SaniCon uh, pump assembly is right here. We still have our gate valves. So keep in mind, you can evacuate your tanks the good old fashioned way with gravity, but the SaniCon system, think of it as a garbage disposal for your black tank. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna macerate all of the solids in there and then pump them out and it does it very quickly. Where that comes to play that could be particularly helpful is if you're at an older park, maybe a state park, and the, the attachment for your sewer hose is actually higher than what you are here, and believe me, that occasionally happens, believe it or not, you can actually pump that waste up to that location. Maybe you're at home and your clean out next to your house is, you know, 75 feet from your unit you can run that waste through a hose and pump it and evacuate it it just does a nice job most people i talk to that have the SaniCon like it and appreciate it that it's there we have six point auto leveling on this coach so once those uh, stabilizers and levelers are dropped you're getting very little movement on the inside and the coach is very stable what's behind door number two let's look it's the back of our residential refrigerator. So instead of having to undo a panel or worse yet, have to pull this fridge out from the inside if you ever need to do some maintenance issues, you can open up this door and access it from here. Now right here's where the guts of it are. So if a technician needs to come out, pop this door open, open this up, 
and you have easy access to it. Plus, if you're going to winterize it, um, here's your valve, easy access to the valve should you ever need to replace it. Makes it real handy to be able to do that. Lockable slam latch right there. We've got tilt out windows all the way around except for in the slide so you can pop those out in case it comes up a rain shower it can't rain on the inside but you still get that nice ventilation through the coach. Now here's a, uh, something exclusive to the Pinnacles and it's a power cord reel. These 50 amp cords get really stiff and cantankerous when it gets cold. So I have a power cord reel right here to uh, roll that thing up. It really makes it nice. Again, especially when it's cold outside and uh, very handy to have that. I'm so close to the fence here, so I'm not gonna try to squeeze through here. So we're gonna pick up the tour on the other side of the coach. So here we are on the back of this coach. You can see our camera right up there. So you can keep an eye on things going down the road. More importantly, when you're backing into a site, you can make sure you're not running over your spouse or a tree. More importantly, the tree, I mean your spouse. So that's up there, and remember, that turns into a security camera after you set up camp. And I'll show you the monitor when we get in here. Now, this is another unique thing to Pinnacles. See, it's a one-piece molded fiberglass automotive-style rear cap. That's a mouthful. So all the other fifth wheels in the Jayco line, and most of them that you see out there, have just a flat wall in the back. This is a molded uh, rear cap, which really gives it a nice, classy, and more timeless style. Have a hitch back here. It's 3,000 pounds slash 300, so 300 pounds of down weight here for maybe you have a big green egg or a little smoker, bicycle, um, or if you want to pull a small boat or a golf cart trailer, you can do that back here too, and there's a hookup for lights to do that as well. Nice to have that if you need it. We have a J port here, so this is what Jayco calls this little fitting. It looks like a hitch receiver, so you can put in a uh, cooktop or a griddle, whatever you want. You can provide one yourself, uh, but it's a low flow, low pressure, quick connect propane right here. So I can put, uh, again, any kind of a cooktop or griddle out here, and I have easy access to the propane. Here's a little storage for your stinky slinky so you don't have to put that in a tub or something underneath. You've got a dedicated place for it right there. Handy to have that. Also have power, 110 power and cable satellite uh, output here. So once you connect to the cable at your campground or resort, now you'll have cable here as well as up front. So I can put a TV if we've got our fire pit and you want to do some tailgating and watch a football game or something I can connect right there have a TV out here as well now we're getting into that what I love the fun side so again all this patio awning coverage up here um, these are what Solera calls it's a Solera brand awning and what they call a pull down to adjust the pitch so I literally all I have to do is pull down on this and I have now tilted the awning this way why would you ever want to do that? Well, you don't want water to pool in there. So let's say it's a light drizzle and say the water is dripping right here on a picnic table. And I, want to, I would rather the water be dripping off this side. Just come down to this side, give this a pull, and now I've tilted it this way. Now the water's going to run off this end of it. And it gives you a little more shade too. If the sun's sitting over there, we're sitting out here visiting and the sun's in my eyes, I can pull that down and adjust the amount of shade. But mostly for the dripping, the dew, a little bit of shower. Now, at what point should you roll your awning in? That's a judgment call. Generally, if it gets windy enough that you're worried about it, you probably should, okay? At 25 miles per hour, yeah, I'd probably pull them in. Another thing you can do, and I recommend, is take one of those ratchet tie-downs. If you're going to be spudded into a campground or resort for an extended period of time, you're going to want to have the awnings out for a lot of that time. I'll take a ratchet tie-down, hook it right there, take the other end, and put it either in a good solid stake or a tree stump or something like that, and ratchet it down just enough 
to keep this thing from billowing. So the worst thing you want to happen is wind to come up under here and really put a lot of pressure on this, flapping it up and down. If you put just a little bit of down pressure here, it'll keep that from happening. Still, when it gets real windy, you'll want to roll it in. Of course, we have a TV on the, you know, I've got a place for a TV up there. I can put another TV there. Hey, how about a third TV? This is the one you'll use most because it's right behind door number three. Open this up and we have a TV. It's an Insignia Smart TV. So all the TVs are smart TVs now on, on uh, Jayco fifth wheels. So I have an Insignia TV. Um, I might add a sound bar, and that's one thing I wish for, and so Jayco, if you're listening, I might like a sound bar here, because the volume from this TV itself is not super loud, so a sound bar might be real nice. But it's so handy to open this up and have your TV right here on the patio side. Um, JBL speakers, so I'm a musician, I appreciate that they're all JBL speakers and JBL sound system on this unit and you can push music from inside and from your phone through these speakers. In fact, I had it going on just a little bit ago. We were, I think I, all I needed was some beverage, a cooler, uh, some lawn chairs and a picnic table out here and we'd be good to go. So here's your spray port. So this is the uh, same spray port that you see on the other side. Quick connect so I can wash off my feet, uh, your wife, your other significant other, the dog, whatever, right there. This is a 12 gallon direct spark ignition water heater. So it runs off gas or electric. If you leave it set on automatic, which is my recommendation, as soon as you unplug from shore power, it's going to go to propane. It's going to prefer electric, and when you have electric back, it'll go back to electric. So if you're out for extended periods of time with no other source of power, you're good to go. It's running off propane. Um, okay, let's talk about the steps before we go in. So these are... Uh, more ride brand step above steps. Jayco waited for a minute to adopt these because the early versions of these tended to come down and crash on people's heads. So Jayco said, no, nope, not going to do it. They look great, but let's figure that out. Now they have a feature which I basically call zero gravity. So it's not going to come crashing down on your head. Plus it's super easy with one finger to push up or pull down very very easy to do stowing for travel you just pop it up in there close the door and that's your travel position pull it down to deploy it each one of these tabs will adjust the legs in infinite number of positions so if you're on uneven ground we're going to drop this down push in on that and drop whichever leg you need so you have a good firm contact point for getting in and out of the coach and the other added benefit of these steps versus the old uh, steps that would just hang freely is they don't transfer motion. So if somebody's entering, exiting the coach, somebody's still sleeping inside, you're not transferring motion. And finally, you have a grab bar here. So even if you don't have knee or hip problems, it's really handy to have that. You just pop it up like so, pop it in there for travel to get it out of the way. It's real easy to deploy when you get to your campsite. It makes it real nice going in and out of the coach. Speaking of going in of the coach, Come join me inside. Welcome inside this 36 FBTS. There's so many reasons that I'm in love with this, especially as a full timer's design. Starting with the fact that it's a pinnacle, but also in terms of this model specific. So I'll, I did a whole video on the difference between north points and pinnacles, and you might check that out. We'll put a link in the description below to help you with just differences between all pinnacles and north points. But I'll also point out some design components of this unit specifically. Now remember, all pinnacles are wide body. They're eight and a half feet wide instead of eight. So even apart from the slide outs, you have more room in here and you can feel it mostly and most significantly right here on the island. This island is six inches wider because the whole coach is six inches wider. So you can have this massive residential style uh, island here. Lots of prep space. This just feels like home. 
this whole coach feels very residential. That's why I'm in love with it as a full-timers option. Always want pantry space and you have it here. There's motion sensor lights in here. So handy pantry space right where it should be, right next to the galley. And then you have some uh, st storage space up here as well. Now on the pinnacle, you'll see that the raised panel cabinetry exists throughout the whole thing and there's more, a little bit more of a gloss on the modern farmhouse paint in here. Very nice. Uh, it's a real light airy kind of a decor, opens it up nicely, brightens it up. I'm not a fan of white, white, white interiors, but this is just the right hue that really brightens it up and it's by far been the most popular decor option that Jayco's offered in recent years, in fact. What do we have behind me? Cue the music. This is a residential refrigerator. So the very first Class A motorhome that my wife and I bought, she said it's got to have a residential fridge. And man, does this have a residential fridge. It's Whirlpool. You can buy this same fridge at a big box store this afternoon if you want. It's got ice and water in the door. And remember that ice and water, uh, the water supply is supplied by the five gallon jug that lives down in the basement here. Now, some people have asked me, can I plummet so that the water supply from the city water will serve the ice and water in the fridge? You can do that, we can help you do it. Most people opt to leave it the way it is, which is being served from that five gallon jug below. But easing into the galley area, this is so great because lots of prep area, lots of storage area. If you like to cook and you're out and you're full timing in this, it's nice to have a kitchen that feels like home and boy does this. In addition to your residential size fridge, this is a residential size convection microwave here and 24 inch, which in Europe, this is residential size, certainly bigger than you're gonna find in most RVs, 24 inch insignia brand cooktop. I call it a chef style cooktop because this is a really heavy cast grate, obviously easy to remove for easy cleaning. And then a uh, nice sized oven here. So you can cook and bake just like you can at home in this oven, and it's really, really a nice oven. Now, Jayco's cabinet build is great. All of the drawer fronts and door fronts are gonna be solid maple, so you have full extension drawer glides. They're all soft close. There's some neat features that show up on the pinnacle too, like this. You've got an extra storage area down there with a separate drawer glide for this. Again, soft close. Coming over onto the island side, I've got some storage here, and this little drawer pulls out, and these little slots are so you can stow your sink covers in there for travel. So you pop these in there so they're not rattling around during travel, and or when you're, uh, when you're at a campsite too, you wanna have this open, pop them in there, and it's a nice place to store them. They don't take up too much room down there, so that's really handy to have that. Right here is the water pump switch for the five gallon water jug that lives down in the basement. So I'm gonna turn that off right away because there's no water in there. But once that switch is on, I now have pressurized water here at this spigot. It's also, again, serving water and ice in the door there. I talk about this often, but we go into an RV, my wife and I will look at an RV design and we, hmm, I wonder where the trash can goes. Jayco thought of that, boom, right here's your trash can. There's room for two of them. You could do a trash and a recycle, but it's nice there and it's in the right place. So if you're doing food prep and stuff, throw stuff away right there and then push it out of the way. Now back to the uh, galley, the cooking side of it. We have cabinet space on either side here and up top here, spices. Pull this down and we'll have a spice tray up here, which is real handy. This used to be a wine rack. It's now a spice rack. I did a survey recently and asked you guys to vote. Overwhelmingly, everybody said, yeah, we prefer the spice rack. Now, if you don't want this up here, you can remove the whole thing. There's screws that attach here on either side. Back those out. You can pull this out. Now you just have an open storage space if you would prefer. You can certainly do that. More storage here on this side as well. And before I leave the galley area, you can even expand your prep area with this little guy right here. So you can put uh, bar stools up here. 
It's a cutting board surface, more prep area. Pull it out to release it and then open up uh, your space for the living area right here. Really nice to have that. Speaking of living area, let's talk about this. So our entertainment central here. I have a television that's on a televator. It's there when you want it. It's not when you don't. So super easy to pop this up. It is a smart TV. It, it is an Insignia brand television as well, which is serviced by Best Buy. You're gonna find JBL stereos in all the pinnacles, which I really appreciate. The quality is there. The speakers are better than what they used to be. Plus, there's three zones you can push music to. A, are these speakers right here? B, are the speakers in the ceiling overhead? And then C, are the speakers out on the patio? Uh, you can have them all on at the same time or just one of them. If you don't want any music here and you want to push music outside, you can do that. But yes, thank you, Jayco, for putting a bona fide sound system in the, in the unit. Now, right here, this is actually a subwoofer which lives at different places on different models. I think it actually lives behind here on this one. But anyway, you can adjust the volume of your subwoofer so you can get those deep basses and uh, really adds to the audio experience. This is a fireplace down here. Think of it as a fancy space heater. So this will do a nice job of knocking the chill off this unit on, uh, on those chilly nights without having to kick your furnace on. Now, I do have three ACs on this unit. One of them has a heat pump on it, but if you're at your campground, RV resort, it gets down into the 50s at night, maybe you want to knock the chill off between the heat pump and this, you're going to be comfortable and you're not using any of your own propane. So that's real handy. Now, got this light up here. Got storage up here as well, coax cable and power. Uh, which is inverted too, I might add. So again, that's nice that that power is inverted in case you want to pull over, you have no other source of power, you're not running a generator and you can still watch TV, you can still run a CPAP machine and have regular 110 power. And maybe you want to put another component up here, DVD player, that kind of thing. You can do that. Now back into the living area, I do have a nice, very comfortable sofa that converts into a queen size bed. So here's the deal. This is a couple's full-timing dream floor plan as far as I'm concerned. I can't wait to show you the bathroom in just a minute. But in case your Aunt Matilda decides to, to visit you, she calls up and says, hey, can I come out and stay with you guys? It's entirely up to you whether you tell her that this makes into a bed or not. That can be our secret, up to you. Our standard uh, MO with our RV that we currently have is, uh, yeah, you know what, it sleeps two, entertains four, feeds six. You guys have a great time, we'll see you tomorrow. But hey, if you want to be nice and you like your Aunt Matilda, this folds out into a double bed and it's quite comfortable. Nice to have that if you need it. There is 110 power there. And also over here you see USB ports so you can be charging your gadgets while you're sitting here reclining on the sofa. And there's storage on either side and these little flip up lids gives uh, plenty of room in there for reading material and, and whatnot. Before I leave this area, I want to point out the ducts in the floor. A lot of people will say, man, I wish Jayco wouldn't put those in the floor because they just collect dust and dog hair and stuff. Fair enough, but there's a very good reason why uh, Jayco does this. There's a single raceway that goes through the middle of the coach that serves all of these ducts. And I'm sitting here, I'm seeing one, two, three. I can see four from where I'm sitting right here. So because they're in the floor, it's much more efficient. If Jayco were to put them in the walls and cabinets, that ductwork has to make a right angle, a right angle, a right angle, a right angle. And every time it does that, it adds resistance to the fan motor. It's 30% more efficient to have them like this. So efficiency versus cosmetic, I get it. It's kind of a pain being in the floor, but I also appreciate efficiency and longevity and reliability by the way that they do it there. These uh, are recliners and oh boy, are they comfortable. So I have lights here. I have auto recline, massage heat, very, very comfortable. Uh, it's a wall hugger design, so it goes back even though it's already against the wall here. Nicely 
uh, located across from our TV and our fireplace. Right here I have charging, both USB and 110. Have my cup holders right here in the armrest. If I want to turn this into more of a love seat kind of a deal, I have that too. So three people that like each other a lot can sit right in here comfortably too. Speaking of USB, there's also a USB right here in the arm as well. So in addition to the armrest on either side, there's a USB. Light switch right here, also a little shortcut. Light switch is here for our ceiling lights. So I don't have to get, who don't want to get up to turn on the lights on and off, right? So um, I can even go low uh, AC, high AC, dinette, all exterior lights I can control from right here as well. Handy to have that there if you need it. Now here's another pinnacle thing. You'll have day and night shades everywhere on a pinnacle. So we have the shades pulled so it doesn't mess with the camera. But if you say you're at a campsite, it's daytime, you want a little natural light in, but it's hot. And so you want to help keep it as cool as possible. You can keep these day shades down. These do a really great job of keeping it cooler in here and still allowing natural light to come on. The first RV that my wife and I bought that had these, I was sold. I think, man, I love that. Plus, it adds a little more privacy, so you really cannot see through these. At night, with the tinted glass, it's hard to see in here anyway, but with that down, forget about it. You're not going to be able to see through there at all. Um, there's a little... Um, Tower of power, as they say, with our USB-C and regular USB 110, 110. Just release that with that little red knob, push it down, and it has wireless charging. So if your phone accepts that, just lay it on there, and boom, it starts charging without any cords. Now on the Pinnacle, unlike the North Point, you're going to have more luxury appointments. And I already pointed out the way the woodwork is, some raised panel cabinetry, and this is a design element that shows up only on the Pinnacles with these glass light fixtures. Really classy, really nice. Also you have this cabinet build out here next to your table, so there is a little bit of storage on either side here. And then I have two more chairs like this under the bed up front if you want to have four people around here, right? So like that, extends out, and now I can seat four people. Remember, it sleeps two, feeds four, entertains six, <laughs> right? So a little storage under there too, and never had hurts to have even more storage underneath each seat. You can flip up the seat bottom and put books and throw all your bills under there and forget about them, right? You don't have any bills, you're retired, you bought this, you're all good to go, right? Now, what do we have here? This is a bath and a half floor plan. So, I've got a full awesome bath that I can't wait to show you, but this is a half bath here and very nicely appointed. I have a fan up top with a fan switch here, so I'm gonna turn that on. I can do it from here. Just hit the switch to open it up. I can open it up from here. Get the, uh, get the smells that are inherent with bathrooms out. Close that up. But I have a nice sink in here. I have a medicine cabinet, actually a very spacious medicine cabinet here. Finish closing that door. And real tile backsplash here. A little bit of storage under here as well. This is a porcelain foot flush toilet here. Now a lot of people will say, hey, I don't want the bathroom that close to my kitchen. Deal breaker. Yeah, fair enough, but here's the thing. If it doesn't go here and you're looking for a bath and a half, where does it go? So I have a full master bath up there. And I'm not going to put the bath back there. This is really the only logical place if you are seeking a bath and a half. And if you're not, I get it. That's why they make strawberry and chocolate ice cream. But if you like a bath and a half, and many do, that way you've got really two living zones here. I got the master bedroom, master bath up there off limits to everybody else. You have a couple over to play cards, have drinks or whatever, they can use this bathroom in here. So think about it for a small trailer, a small travel trailer, the bathroom's even closer than this to the kitchen area. So just something to think about, but it's nice having it there if that's what you're looking for. This unit's got 380 watts of solar up on the roof already. So think of that as a super good 
trickle charger for your batteries. That alone isn't going to keep the batteries going indefinitely if you're running the fridge and lots of lights and stuff. It's never going to run your AC with just that much solar, but it will extend the amount of time you can be out without another source of power, i.e. running your tow vehicle, running a generator, or having shore power. Behind here is your master control panel. This is the BM Pro system. So this is our climate, our lights, our motors, tanks. We can check our tank levels right here. These are all of our motors, so our, our awnings, slide motors, our temperature, so our climate, our main, second AC and third, and remember we also have heat pump on here, and then our lighting. So I can dim all these lights by just dragging this one way or the other. Real handy to have. And then these are actual hardwired switches down here. So in the unlikely event that something were to happen with this Android touchpad right here, you still have hardwired switches. So I have um, our awnings and our slides just toggle through each one, extend and retract, and you can do it the good old fashioned way. This switch right here is for the ceiling fan that's uh, in the back over the living room. Interesting place to put it, but that's where it is. And then I have a coat closet right inside the door. This is another aspect that makes this so great for full timing. I'm coming in and out, took the dog for a walk, come in here, want to hang my jacket, get it out of the way. It's right in there and right where it should be. Speaking of full timing, nice to have a central vac system and we have one. There's a motion sensor light there. So I call this a magic dustpan. I keep a straight broom next to the door, brush all the dog hair or the grass clippings or whatever right here where they land, flip that up and away it goes. Right here is where you're going to hook up all your hose attachments and everything. The hose will reach from one end to the other. Really handy to have that. Our first RV that had that, I gave it the big old eye roll, like really? Central vac system? Now I love it because we don't even take the little shark vac or whatever. We do it all with that and don't have to take something extra along with us. So coming up in here into the master bath, master bed area, so nice. I have a king bed here. I've got uh, our 360, our Wi-Fi 360 up here. So this is a Weingard brand. This is a LTE, it's a Wi-Fi, it's a TV antenna all in one. And the neat thing is, is if you wanna create a hotspot, you can do that here too through your mobile provider. There's easy instructions to follow. You'll get a SIM card, pop it in there, and then you can create a hotspot. Uh, in here. We've got our day and night shades all the way around, our nice pillow assortment, and there's lots of storage under the bed here too. Look how easy that was to lift that up. We've got the two chairs that match those up there, but they're folding chairs. This is our central vac system attachments. Our little pigtail quick attach uh, hose attachment there and then water filter water filter wrench up there So anyway, uh, once you get everything situated, you're probably going to get that stuff down in the wet bay You might leave your chairs up here, but you still have extra room for linens and so on I'm gonna grab this box out of here because I want to show that to you when you're shopping around and you should See what you see under the mattress. You're always gonna see plywood with Jayco. We're standing on plywood there's plywood here, and there's plywood up in the roof structure, not OSB or particle board. Plywood is much stronger. It doesn't off gas like particle board does, and it's, well, it's more expensive. But Jayco has opted to go this way because it's just a superior product. It's much stronger. Every bed base in every Jayco is going to have plywood. Easy to lift, easy to put back down. Now, this box, this is your monitor for your cameras. When you're going down the road, this will live up in the dash of your truck. You can keep an eye directly behind you, right and left. Now, here's the neat thing. When you get to your campsite, unplug that thing. Most people will set it up here, but you can set it anywhere and keep an eye on everything that's going on outside. I have a security camera switch that's right here to make sure that's on, that's now throwing power to each of the lighting locations, which is where your cameras are, including over the door. So somebody approaches your camera, 
uh, door, I should say, and they knock on the door, you can look out and see who's knocking at your door. It's really nice to have that. Appreciate Jayco doing that. Now, another pinnacle thing is we have this cabinet build out around the TV in the bedroom. You don't see this in North Point. So nice cabinet uh, build out around your smart Insignia TV. A little bit of storage here, a little bit of storage here, and then you got four drawers down here. In our case, this would be my drawer, and then Mrs. Drudge would get all of those plus everything else. But you know what? That's all I need to be happy. <laughs> okay. Now, what's under here? It says open here. What could it be? It's more storage. So this is a shallow little area, perfect for jewelry personal protection, things like that. Because once that sticker's off there, you wouldn't really know there's anything under there. So to be able to open that up and access uh, something quickly, whether it's jewelry or something that goes boom, nice place to put it. Okay, now going into the master bath, I'm saving the best for last because this is so spacious and well-designed. It's one of the many reasons that this marks uh, probably the best floor plan for full timing, I think, in all the Pinnacle lineup. Why? Well, let's see. We got his and her sinks right here. That's great. A spacious, very nice shower. Great. I have cedar line closet, walk-in closet. Great. With a hamper. And instead of putting the washer and dryer in the closet, which is where it usually lands and takes up closet space, Jayco put it over here. So obviously we don't have it in here yet, but these shelves would come out. I can put a stackable washer and dryer in there and at the same time, not take up valuable storage space in here. So really appreciate that. I've got a hamper right here, storage down on the other end, places for shoes and stuff. Plus again, it's cedar line, motion sensor lights everywhere so just like in the basement we have motion sensor lights so you open up this door uh, and the light pops on love that huge mirror here so uh, when i'm putting my makeup on in the morning it's easy for me to see what i'm doing it's important for me to spend a lot of time in front of the mirror makeup and hair it takes a lot of time to look like this <laughs> Cue the laughter. All right, so his and her sinks right here, matte black faucets, real tile backsplash. So I don't have a, a medicine cabinet, so I kind of miss that, but we do have storage underneath here, uh, which I do appreciate. So uh, as always, there's always a trade-off on every design element, and I kind of wish for a medicine cabinet, but on the flip side, I love that there's a ginormous mirror. Now how about this shower? So I'm six feet tall, average build, a lot of room in here. It's nice to have this little bench here that you can sit down on or put your legs up on. This is great. In fact, I had a customer who bought a North Point and uh, specifically was really wanting a shower uh, fixture like this. So I have our huge shower outlet and our shower wand here. There's an outlet right here and down here. One, two, three, four. That's really, really nice. So this is kind of what you would expect in a high-end hotel. We have our shower surround, which is really classy. And I want to point out that every Jayco, every model, every line reinforces their shower pan on the bottom. So I can jump up and down here and that shower base is not going to give because they reinforce it with three quarter inch plywood. Some manufacturers, you get in the shower, here's another thing you do when you're shopping around and you should see what's under the mattress, see what kind of plywood you see, get in the shower and do this. If you feel that thing giving up and down, that means every time you step in the shower, it's causing that P-trap to go up and down a little bit. And over time, it's gonna open up, it's gonna create a leak. So Jayco takes the extra effort to reinforce the shower base, which really minimizes your odds of ever having a leak problem later down the road. And the thing is, is you wouldn't see it for maybe months or years until then it's too late. So thank you, Jayco, for doing that. This is a glass shower enclosure. My suggestion is keep a little squeegee, maybe pop it up on the wall, squeegee off these panels, that way they stay nice and clean. Now we have a porcelain foot flush toilet here. Again, lots of room in here. So again, full timer's dream, you and your significant other, 
you can both be using a sink at the same time and there's enough room in here to maneuver without being on top of each other love that that washer and dryer is separate from the rest of the coach so again we have a clear del delineation between the couple's part no man's land except for the two people that own this thing and then our guests can be down here you can access this bathroom so we are in a wide body construction lots of room in here opposing slides opens this up so we're not so huge that you can't stay anywhere we're over 40 feet so a lot of people think 36 feet is sort of that threshold it depends on the geography uh, we're at four, right at 40 feet with our rv and we've never not been able to stay near a place we wanted to some state parks and national parks are limited in big rig access but there's usually a place down the road a private campground that you can stay at for my way of thinking i'm going to buy the rv that suits our needs and then we're going to park it where we can park it but that's just the way we roll but hey if you have questions about this model in particular jaco generally or vod rv drop them in the comments below. I love hearing from you. I love to get uh, feedback from you about what you think about this model. Maybe you're on the fence about which one's right for you. Maybe you're on the fence about whether or not your truck can pull this safely. I can't give uh, specific uh, advice on truck models without having a lot more information. So. If you're wondering about that, you can drop uh, an email to us or give us a call. I need to know your truck, your make, model, 4x4 or 2x4, whether it has a tow package and preferably what the axle differential is and the engine size. So we take all that together, look it up and give you uh, some good advice on whether or not you can tow one of these safely. My name is Mike Drudge. I appreciate you joining me and until next time, take care, enjoy the great outdoors and we'll see you then.